You know, it's been a while since I recorded a tutorial on this account. I guess it's time to do it again. Why not? I feel like I've recorded like a Marvel Cinematic intro with all the Hey, what's going on guys? Venom here! Um, so let's hit that intro and get started. So many of you pointed out that I had a brother in the background of most of the older tutorials um, that was playing Fortnite in the background. Um, yeah, it's kind of a dead meme now, but this is the kid now. It's my younger brother, Hamilton. He's working on homework right now. Anything you want to say to the group? No, really. It was good. Fair enough. So this is the Fortnite kid, for y'all that are curious. Hey, what's going on, guys? Venom here, back again with another tutorial for you guys. Instead of decaling like we've done in the past, today I'm going to be going over how I am painting a custom of mine. It's meant to be much more of a glossary and not much of an in-depth tutorial for you guys. Um, doing a very brief kind of, oh, here's what I'm, a couple steps that I'm doing. And hopefully in the future I'll take the time to record a more in-depth video for you guys. It'll likely be a lot longer than this one. I know this one will probably end up being probably 20 minutes. Um, and I apologize, but hopefully you guys get the idea of what goes into painting a resin printed armor kit. Uh, whether from my company, Venom CPW, Nate's Minifigs, and then Figures or any of the other accounts that are, or businesses that are around now. Um, I know more and more people will join the community in what I do. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, and yeah. So for those that don't know, um, I create resin printed armor kits using resin printers. And we're working on eventually going into injection molding, but that's another story. Um, essentially taking a liquid and turning it into a, a solid state plastic. Um, the stuff isn't the best for you when it's not a solid, um, just an FYI. So don't drink the stuff. It's probably toxic depending on the brand. So, I mean, you can make stuff from, you know, action figure armor kit parts, you know, big, big figs, um, minifigure stuff. So this is actually, uh, 500% of the original minifig. Um, I don't think I have one to compare right here. Um, actually I do here. I can show you guys, but this is a Boba custom of mine. It's giant compared. So, I mean, y'all kind of get the idea. Anyway, resin printing is great for a couple, a lot of things. You can do small scale manufacturing, which is what we, what we specialize in, uh, working with other creators around the world to offer their kits and items on our site, um, while they earn a royalty or some sort of support out of, um, working with us. Um, so you're not only supporting me and, um, uh, my employees, which is right now, it's just me. Um, but you're also supporting those that design the stuff because I don't do any designing work right now myself. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the uh, actually painting tutorial in and of itself. Sorry for the long intro. Welcome to my messy desk. Um, I think it's well known at this point, if you're a customizer of pretty much anything, you're going to have a messy desk. And it's also a part of just me sorting new parts for you guys that are coming out on a usually weekly basis. I might end up skipping this week just because of Black Friday orders that I'm working on. Um, which is when I'm recording this is shortly after Black Friday. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about, uh, what we're doing and, uh, dive into it. So I was looking on my website and I saw that Burwald doesn't have any painted photos on the website. So I was like, hmm, that sounds like fun. Let's go ahead and do it. So, um, usually there's a lot of issues painting white armor kits, which is actually, this is a clone armor kit, if you guys can't tell. Um, but I've actually had recent success in painting white kits. So this is a commando, um, that we recently released. If you guys are interested, the links for everything, uh, that I show in this video will be in the description down below where you can support all of us. Um, but I learned that doing white paint isn't really much of a pain. It's just, you got to do it with the right steps. So this is actually a recent test of mine with um, a clone armor kit that we're getting ready to release from uh, Pete's Armory, which is uh, now part of our collection. And uh, it looks fine. I mean, it does, it probably could use another coat of paint, but um, because I'm a bit lazy, I'm actually just going to go over it with a black acrylic wash. Um, and I'll show you guys how I'm going to do that with the um, Burwald kit. But um, this is kind of just a rough, here's what it, what spray painting looks like so i use a single type of spray paint for this right now i actually can't find oh here it is um this is tester spray enamel white i mean it was 5.79 at hobby lobby not the cheapest thing in the world by any means but this is what was at hobby lobby and i was there picking up stuff anyway so like hey why not let's give it a shot and it's worked well for me this is the same paint i used for the commando um i think i use a different paint for this for sort of stormtrooper but that's besides the point 
um, and it works well. So that's what we're going to use for this. Um, I would show you guys how to hand paint everything, but for base, uh, base colors like this, um, spray paint's best for white. I've learned anything else can pretty much be hand painted. Um, yeah, so I have the fantastic ability to use, um, pegs and clippers, uh, alligator clips like this, which hold on to a piece right here at the top and it's supported right here with the little popsicle stick or whatever you want to call it, kitchen stick, kitchen skewer, whatever. Anyway, um, so I went ahead and got it all suspended. I actually have a stand for this. I probably overpaid for it at Hobby Lobby, but you guys can probably find it at Amazon if you guys don't have a hobby store near you. Um, so I have them all pegged up um, pretty loosely, trying to avoid any of the main areas um, because I try to only do one or two coats of the paint um, and I usually end up touching up wherever the alligator clips were. Um, and so for example of like, you know, putting something at the very edge and trying to minimize what you have to touch up later is this. So you can see it's just barely held on by the alligator clip and it's not being, uh, bent. I don't think, uh, just enough to kind of hold it while it gets paint on it. And then, uh, the stands there. So people, so the parts can dry and not get bumped. Uh, and it works great. I mean, you could even use like a piece of styrofoam or packing material for this instead. Um, I was like, hey, that sounds like fun. Let's do it. And I told myself I could return it if I didn't like it, but I don't do that usually. So I don't know what I was thinking. Anyway, um, I got it all pegged up and everything. I'm not going to use any primer um, for pretty much any other color, especially if I'm hand painting the base, base coat instead of spray painting it. I'll use a primer. And I'll just show you guys the primer that I use. Um, I think it's Valhello, Valhello, Valhello? I don't know how you pronounce it. Surface primer, I got this off Amazon. I think you can find it at Hobby Stores too, but that's where I found this. And most of my stuff comes from Hobby Lobby. There's a couple of specialty paints that aren't, um, but get that for pretty much anything. It works great as a kind of sort of black base coat, sort of, sort of. Um, it's very watery, so just be careful about that. Um, and it works great for applying, applying primer, um, but this paint works fine without a primer. Just gotta do a couple coats. So we're gonna go ahead and hit it. I'm gonna get my phone on the stand and I'm gonna do what you totally shouldn't do. All right, so I'm gonna be a bad example, um, but honestly, if you're painting something and it's as tiny as this, you could technically do this. Don't recommend it at all. You will get paint on your shingles, um, but I'm gonna quickly do it in and out and hopefully it won't impact it. But don't do this. Don't do this at home. Go downstairs if you're you know, up in your frog or whatever, which is what I'm at. Um, and spray outside, like actually outside and not out your window, because you will also smell those fumes and it's bad for you. So wear a mask and do this outside, okay? Now that I've said that, I'm gonna do the bad thing. All right, safety first. Mask, wear a mask while you're doing this. So one thing I'm gonna do right, so wear a mask, go outside, don't do this. All right, I only did a couple spritz, and that's all I'm doing is a very thin first base coat. You don't want to get this on there like you would for sealant. You just want to do a very low spritz. All right, so I have the second coat on here. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but once we paint it up, it'll look a bit better. 
Um, I will come clean with y'all. I did clean up these prints beforehand, so I took an X-Acto knife and cleaned up the dome a little bit. There's still a little divot, which I don't know why, but some of the older prints just have that divot. Don't know why, it just is what it is. Um, might fill it up with paint later. But uh, I cleaned it up, used a little bit of sandpaper here and there, an X-Acto knife where it needed it um, to get up some of the imperfections. It really took me like five minutes max to clean up everything. Some little residual supports and stuff like that. Like I didn't do the best job cleaning up back here, but it, it is what it is, unfortunately. So we're gonna continue on. I'm gonna let this dry for a few minutes and um, let's go ahead and start talking paint colors. Okay, I lied. Um, I forgot to say something. I did put two coats on everything. Some things looked fine because I goofed it on initially. Um, so I did put two coats of this paint. So I do recommend doing two coats if you can. Just do light spritz initially to kind of give it like a primer stage almost. So just be careful how much paint you put on there so you don't goop it on and uh, make a nightmare for yourself later. All right, before y'all say anything again, I did apologize for the mess on my desk before you guys go in the comments and be like, ooh, your desk is messy, ooh. Don't care, don't, I really don't care. It is messy, it is what it is. I cleaned this off already, like a couple weeks, no, not a couple weeks ago. Yeah, a couple weeks ago, because I was gone. Um, it doesn't feel like a couple weeks ago because I've been on vacation for several different things. So um, let's go ahead and talk paint colors and that kind of stuff. Um, I just use this tiny little brush really doesn't matter what brand brush you get. So it's like a cheap, like 50 cent brush or whatever that I got from a pack. Um, pack was like eight bucks, or whatever came with like 12 different brushes. So I just roll with whatever brushes I have. I destroy each of mine. So it is what it is. Um, you do need a water cup. Um, this happens to be the lid of said paint, uh, spray paint that we were using. Um, and I have tape at the bottom cause there's a little hole somewhere. It might actually be clogged up now. Um, I just use it to rinse the brushes off and don't kill them off. Um, it's also helpful to have um, paper towels with you. I don't seem to have any on my desks. Oh, I do have one. Um, so paper towel, just to kind of wipe off your brush. This is actually seems like a resin br resin one. Anyway, that's besides the point. Paint, um, this for paintbrush, palette, or paper plate for paints. Um, you can tell this one's been used a lot. I actually painted some, something last night. Um, by something last night, I mean the color, um, or what's become the color, so, um, little blue, little Brussels and everything. Anyway, besides the point, besides the point, I'm making, I'm going on side tangents. Um, what paint colors are we going to need? Um, well, you got to kind of go off of your concept art or whatever you're working off of. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do a quick Google and, uh, look. and see okay here we go so i have concept art right there on my computer so we can see that we are going to need blue a red a black and a gray so i'm going to go ahead and find those colors um i mean you can always pick and choose what you want it to be um but i'm going to roll with the existing colors and base it off there i can't see the back on it so i'm just going to roll with um what i can see and kind of go with that um yeah so i'm gonna go ahead and pull up my paints and show you guys what i'm gonna use okay got the paints out i'm using my handy dandy americana paints this is just um acrylic paints they're nothing special this is just what i get at hobby lobby i've always used americana they just nice and easy um five bucks for this bottle this is the giant bottle um or you can just get stuff this size um i use a lot of black paint so i decided to get this i mean this is like a dollar fifty or whatever. This is like five bucks. So pick and choose whatever you want. Um, but I go with Americana. You can pick Apple Barrel. I've heard great things about them so far. Um, my experience with them has been great. I just had Americana paint, so I haven't moved over. So Americana green for the visor. Um, it's only gonna be like one detail, so it really doesn't matter. But um, gray will darken this probably for the gray that's needed um, with that same black paint I showed you guys. Um, and then I think I'm going to use this blue. It's an older blue. I think there's still paint in here. Um, and I might darken this up just a tad. Um, or I might just hope that the black wash fixes it. Because it's a little lighter than what it should be in the in the photo. And then I have um, opaque airbrush uh, white. This is like an ultra thin white paint. Uh, that's used, it's supposed to be used for airbrushing. 
um, but it's super thin and works great for touch-ups for spray paint and that kind of stuff. So the spots that the alligator clips are covering, I'm just going to go over it with this and then there are touch-ups and stuff that I miss um, with the uh, paint job that I do. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab the armor kit and let's go ahead and start with the helmet. All right, I'm hoping you guys can see exactly what we're working with here. These are the painted parts that I have. I also have the um, gauntlets, which I'll probably just paint a couple layers with the uh, airbrush paint. I figured they're too small. The alligator clips will cover about half of them. If I were to try to spray paint them, so I'm like, eh, why bother? So um, I'm going to get out a waste fig, as I call it, um, which is usually just like a figure that has existing paint. If I use it as like a dummy or whatever. So this is like an extremely beaten up minifigure that I've abused. Um, and I'm just going to pop. So this actually has some blue tack on it. You really don't need blue tack. Um, this head has a lot of sealant and paint and coats, stuff like that. So the head's not going to go all the way down, um, which is a good thing. You only just, you know, need it snug enough to where it won't move when you paint it. So this is it right here. Again, we're on a budget here. We're not, you know, trying to spend a lot of money on what we don't need to do. Hopefully I'll have a helmet stand in the future, but that's kind of like the only thing that you might want to buy for helmets. Um, but I'm not going to waste my time with that. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is get the um, visor done because that's probably the first color um, or first thing that's going to be covered over um, the most. So what I'm actually going to do, oh, I just poured too much paint. Gosh, dang it. Um, you don't need a ton of paint at all. So that's actually too much. Um, what I'm going to do is, I thought I had a Q-tip. I have part of a Q-tip. Okay. Um, you can use whatever tool you want, brush or whatever, but, uh, I'm going to get some water out of the dish right here. I mean, just enough to kind of, you know, get a drop out. Maybe. I might need to get another toothpick. Okay, there we go. So I got like a drop of water right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the Q-tip so where I won't like a mess and get my brush of choice and mix the paint in with the water just to get a little thinner because the paint that it comes as in um, the bottles is a little too thick. So just a, a little bit of water, just so it's, you know, milk consist consistency, like an airbrush paint. I'm actually gonna rinse this off because I mixed, got paint all over this brush. You don't need paint all over your brush. So I'm just gonna get it right on the tip of my brush, barely anything. And I'm going to paint the insert. If you need to go back for more paint, then, you know, no problem at all. So I'm being purposely messy here. I just covered the inside of the visor because most of this is actually going to be painted over and what isn't can be touched up. So that's going to be no problem at all. So the green insert's done. If we need to go back and touch it up, make sure it's all covered. That's kind of the goal. Get it all done. So that's done. Um, I'm going to move over to the black details and then the dark gray details and then hopefully knock out. Maybe I'll do the blue first. Anyway, you'll watch it, I'll do a time lapse, and hopefully you guys get an idea of what I'm doing. I did want to quickly apologize here. The angle isn't the best, but you kind of get the idea of what I'm doing. Um, I'm being very careful, and I think I actually diluted the black here to keep it a little thin. And you want to take it very slow. I, I'm sorry I didn't do a voiceover initially for this, but you get the general idea of what I'm doing here. All right, we're going to take a pause right here from painting. I've done most of the details that aren't actually the paint job, except for the green, of course. Um, so before I get to the details, I'm going to go ahead and assemble the base figure that it's going to be assembled on, um, just so it's done and out of the way. Um, I'm going to grab a toothpick. Do I have one that's accessible? Not really. Had one. Where'd he go? Oh, here he goes. So I got to use toothpick right here. I don't really throw them away per se. Um, get some glue. And we're going to attach them to the figure itself. I'll hopefully have individual tutorials of like cleaning the parts. 
assembling all that good stuff. So don't worry if you're like, ooh, I'm lost. Um, again, this is meant to just be like an overall tutorial, rather, or more of like an overview, rather than a tutorial. Um, so, yeah. And I like to have the helmet on just so I can get everything kind of roughly placed. So I have a little bit of glue on this torso. I press it down so it kind of spreads everywhere. And it's not going to be perfect because I'm not perfect. So I'll go ahead and do this. Which side did I put? I want to think of this side. I'm just going to hold pressure on this one. And I apologize, I didn't really specify what we're doing here. Essentially what we're doing with the toothpick is putting a little bit of glue on there to get a specific place where we're putting the glue and we're not making a mess with it. And then just using our fingers to put pressure, get the glue spread out and to kind of activate it on the surface and uh, to get it to stick. All right, so it's all assembled, and I'm actually gonna go through and start adding all the blue, and then we'll go back with the gray and then the red finally. So I'm gonna do it one step at a time, I'm gonna time lapse it. Um, hopefully, I'll enjoy. So I did end up switching the blue out for Apple Barrel Cool Blue, which I had on hand. Um, the one that I tried to use previously was really dry, and it was gonna be problematic to try. Um, and I watered it down with just a little bit of water to make it a bit more spreadable. Um, and kind of get it everywhere. What I'm doing here is really just mapping out where the paint's going, um, doing a rough kind of overall sketching of what the figure's gonna look like, and I'm gonna go over it with a couple coats here in a second. All right, so I have kind of the sort of the base stuff done. Um, this is more of an outline, more of anything. Uh, I'm gonna look, it doesn't seem like there's much of anything on the back, but um, all the blue outline is done. I'm gonna go over and kind of touch everything up and then do with a second coat because this paint's a little thinner than I would like it to be. Um, this just means I can correct any mistakes before they get any severe. Um, and then I'm gonna check back and we're gonna do the gray. Alrighty, so I have all the blue done. I just went back and touched it up and did a couple more layers on the blue. And I'm pretty satisfied with it. We're going to go over with the gray next. Um, and then go back with some touch-ups. And then do some red. So uh, let's get that time-lapse cr cranking. And all I did here for the gray was mix that initial gray with a little bit of black. That black goes a long way, so you don't need a ton of it. And I added a little bit of water to it as well to continue to thin it out. Because this stuff goes on... Uh, really thick um, and very dark. It's not as watery as the blue paint was. All right, well, I could go back and, you know, redefine lines with some tape or whatever. Uh, for the purpose of this video, that's kind of beyond this. Maybe in a future video, I'll talk about how tape's useful for painting figs and getting sharper corners and angles and such. Uh, but for now, uh, this is pretty good. Um, I laid down the foundations for the gray. Um, again, I usually do two coats of colors just to kind of, you know, clean up lines, make them sharper, that kind of stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the gray off and then we're going to do some white touch-ups and then the red. All right, so the white's down and I kind of cleaned up the figure, like I said earlier, but I also added the white spot there and added the spot here, which actually seems like it needs a little touch-up. But um, we're going to start hand painting the different symbols on Burwald. So I decided to show this in real time, just so you guys get an idea of how I'm painting the details here. You'll see in the end that it's not the prettiest figure in the world, but you kind of get the ideas of what these symbols are supposed to be. And that's kind of the whole point of this tutorial, is just to give you guys a general idea, hey, this is what this is supposed to kind of be like, um, without going into super depth um, as to what that looks like. 
and uh, just take your time, honestly. Um, if you're doing details like this, I'd recommend finding your sharpest brush around or even using a sharpened toothpick, which I've used in the past um, when I didn't have brushes like this. Um, toothpicks work great. If you have like a little knife, you can whittle them down to even um, tighter brushes, essentially. And uh, they work great. And um, remember, sometimes you have to do multiple coats for the details, too. I opted just to do this one coat. Um, but what I did here is actually layer um, red, then white, then red for a couple of these details that were going to be harder to do in one swoosh. Um, and that's kind of what I opted for, is just to kind of take it one step at a time, do one layer at a time, and kind of have the paint do the work for me. Um, I mean, it, it all turned out fine in the end. Uh, it's definitely not my best handiwork, but you get the, the general idea of what it's supposed to be like. And again, it's a two and a half inch tall figure. I mean, there's not a ton of things you can do. I mean, there's tons of skilled people out there. Don't get me wrong about that. But within this medium, there it's really hard to get these details, you know, 100% perfect without something like decals um, when you're hand painting at all. Let's do the white spot here, and we're going to finish it up. And all I'm doing here is doing that second layer of red um, that I described earlier, going on top of the white that I put on the chest, and again, having the paint do the work for me rather than having to work the paint out. Alrighty, so this is the finished figure. I'm going to seal it up with some Carlon, but I mean, you don't need a tutorial for that. You can use any sealant you prefer. I have a tutorial on sealant here on this channel you all can check out. Um, but yeah, so we went from the base figure I actually will probably add these on at a later date I'm not too stressed about them right now um, but we started with the blank kit like so again gray we went and spray painted it together and we added all the details so it's not the cleanest thing in the world I wasn't aiming for, for perfection but you all get the idea as to what goes into painting a kit and you guys can make your own now so, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a long one. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up, subscribe for more, and you can find these kits and more on venompaintball.store. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for joining us. This is Venom out.